if you are on the verge of divorce, if you think that you married the wrong person, the wrong wife, the wrong husband, this video is for you. Listen, I know that there's a lot of stuff on social media that may be grabbing your attention, but if you are on the verge of divorce and you're thinking about leaving your husband, leaving your wife, you need to stop for a minute because this video could potentially save your marriage from disaster. It could be that you're in a battle in your marriage and you think the battle is between you and your spouse. But maybe you're losing a different battle and it has nothing to do with your spouse. Stay with me. There's a scripture in Ephesians 6. And mind you, many people have divorced and think they lost their marriage, but really they lost the battle. And I don't want that to happen to you. Ephesians 6 and 12 says this, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. So right there is telling you that this battle is not between you and your spouse, that there's something else going on here and you need to know exactly what that is. The next scripture says, Ephesians, this is Ephesians 6 and 12. It goes on to say, but against. So now it's about to tell you what you're really fighting up against. It says principalities against powers against the rulers of the darkness of the world, of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. If the enemy can get you to think that your wife, your husband, is the actual enemy, you're losing this battle. And you've been tricked and you've been fooled. And you're about to let this fool Cause you to lose your marriage? Listen, <laughs> there was a time I was a fool. Listening to him, thinking that my husband was the enemy. We almost divorced 20 or 30 times in our first 10 years. And I thought it was him and he thought it was me. We were so separated and divided in the home that we had already divorced in our minds. But thanks be unto God that we got this revelation. Before we destroyed our family. I'm looking at my family right now. My boys are between the age of 20 and 25. And they have something I had never had. They've had their parents in the same home all their lives. They have parents who actually love them. And is committed to the growth of this family. I didn't have that. And I was on the verge of losing it. Because I didn't realize. That the battle was not between me and my husband, but it was an invisible battle going on. And if you're not equipped to fight this battle, you will lose. You will lose it. The weapons of your warfare, or warfare are not carnal, but mighty through the pulling down of strongholds. You got to get in this word and you got to fight with this word. The only Thing that a demon listens to and responds to is the word of God. And this is why so many believers are losing the battle in the spiritual realm because you don't have the word in you and you're not going for that word with everything in you. So when, when trials and tribulations come up, you fall flat. Why? Because you don't have any word to fight with. Demons don't, don't, don't walk away because you say, leave me alone and get away from me. No, they, they only bow to the word of God. Imagine if you were a soldier, an American soldier, going into the war in Afghanistan, and you had no weapons. <laughs> Your enemy is going to laugh at you, and they're going to clobber you, and you're going to be devastated, destroyed, and taken out immediately because you have no weapons. Do you know that the enemy can see that you don't have weapons? There was a story in the Bible that these men were trying to act like the disciples, <laughs> And the demon said, I'm sorry. I, I know Jesus. I, I know Paul, but who are you? And they end up beating those men up. And they ran away. Because they were not equipped. They were playing church. How many of you are going to continue to play church? Listen, I did it. It doesn't work. I'm just telling you now. It doesn't work. And my marriage was on the chopping block. It was on the chopping block. I just broke my knife. It was on the chopping block because I was ill-equipped. 
So now it's your turn. I just didn't want to come and tell you what the problem is. I wanted to give you some answers. So I want you to mosey on over to James 2 and 10. And I want to show you how God wants you to look at this thing. God says, consider it pure joy. Now, I had no idea when I was going through my, the troubles in my marriage, the hardest times in my marriage, I didn't know the scripture. And one day when I looked at it, I actually got an attitude about it. Because God says, consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds. Not one, he said, but of many kinds. The one you're dealing with in your marriage, the many different trials that you're going through. And some of you are saying, well, you don't know my husband and you don't know my wife. God does. You don't have nothing new. There's nothing, nothing new up under the sun. God knows you're going to have problems with that wife. God knows you're going to have problems with that husband. That's a trial. And God said, count it all joy. Then he says, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Verse 4, let perseverance finish its work. Let perseverance finish the work. Many people have abandoned this part right here. They never wanted to go through the work of perseverance, so they died in the midst of the battle because they thought the battle was between my husband, my wife, but it was a demon in the, in the invisible realm performing his best dance in your marriage, which was the worst dance for you. It goes on to say, but when you ask, in verse 6, you must believe and not doubt because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. Verse seven, that person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. So God is saying, when you come and ask me for something, don't doubt in me because I'm not giving you nothing the moment you doubt. Because see, what happens is you go to God. This is what we do as married couples. We go to God, we pray for our spouse and then we get up and act a fool and, and cuss them out and disrespect them and shut down and operate in unforgiveness. That is proof that you're doubting that God won't do the work. That's proof that you don't believe that God is going to answer your prayers. Your actions when you leave prayer. If you read the story of Hannah who was depressed in her marriage was a barren woman. She went into prayer depressed, but came out skipping and laughing and able to eat and, and, and joyous, and God blessed her. Why? Because she had faith. Where's your faith as it relates to your marriage? Verse 7 says, um, I'm sorry, verse 8 says, such a person is double-minded and unstable in all they, all they do. If you look at your marriage, like I looked at mine, we're 28 years, about to celebrate 29 years in another month. In that first 10 years... <laughs> We were double-minded and we were unstable. I like you today. I can't stand you tomorrow. I like you to uh, this hour, this evening. I, I don't want to talk to you. Man, I, I hope you are listening, wife. I hope you are listening, husband. And I hope you do something. Because I almost abandoned my marriage. Now that I'm almost 29 years in, looking at how beautiful our marriage is, how beautiful our family is, I am so thankful to God that he came and got me and showed me the way before it was too late because I would have never experienced the beautiful marriage that I have now. And I'm not telling you that it's perfect. I'm telling you that my marriage, the one that I have now, was worth fighting for. And I believe most, many of you are going to lose this battle in the spiritual realm. And you're going to think it's a battle between you and your spouse, and it's not. Go win your marriage back with God. Go get his help. Go get equipped. God got you. I'm your girl, Mrs. Toy Banks, the world's most satisfied wife. And if you are a wife watching this and you need additional help, this is why I created the Satisfied Wife Club. Because every wife deserves to be a satisfied wife. And we're here to help you get there. Go to Satisfied Wife Club. Dot com and I see you there. I can't wait to see you satisfied. God bless. Trying to help y'all save y'all marriage. I done broke my best night, my favorite night. I had it for years. I say years. Then got my son about to take me to go get another one. 
Don't tell my husband. Don't y'all tell my husband now. Man, got to do better.